Welcome to the video. In this tutorial, we're going to review some of the recent new features that Quixel has made to their Megascans foliage assets, and how these features can help you to create realistic, natural looking foliage for your projects. A link to the Quixel announcement, along with a link to the free PDF file that outlines the steps we'll be following in this tutorial, will be in the description below. So let's get started. Back in October 2024, Epic released their new Fab Marketplace. Yes, I'm sure we would all like to forget that day. But what you may not know is at the same time, Quixel also announced some updates to their Megascans assets, along with some new features to their foliage assets. Unfortunately, this announcement appeared to fall under the radar due to all the issues with the Fab rollout. So I decided to cover some of them in this video, specifically those regarding foliage. Oh, and by the way, the uh, announcement also mentions that the new ORM pack texture format is here to stay, with Quixel supplying a separate height map texture instead for displacement. Sorry, but it looks like the old ORD textures are not coming back. If you're a beginner, and you're looking to convert the new ORM pack texture into the old ORD format so you can continue to use any existing master material you have, I have a video on how to do that, which I'll post in the description below. Go check it out. Now let's review some of the new features Quixel added to their foliage assets and how these can be used to help you create more realistic and natural looking foliage. I'm using Unreal Engine 5.5.4 and I have this little scene set up that we'll use to walk through all the new features. So to start, Foliage now has its own global Foliage Actor blueprint, and it's in the fab slash megascans slash plants folder. Over in the details panel, you can see all the settings. One thing I want to quickly point out, and that is all the parameters for trees in this blueprint, they don't work. You still have to use the original Global Foliage Actor for changing any settings for trees. I don't know why Quixel included them here. They also don't say if they plan on merging the old tree settings into here at a later date and go back to a single Global Foliage Actor for trees and plants. Or are they planning some new features for trees in the future? We'll just have to wait and see. Also, the new Global Foliage Actor uses its own material parameters collection now. This is not something you need to worry about. I have it documented in my free downloadable PDF file if you want to dive into it more. I just wanted to make you aware of it. Whether this stays this way or not remains to be seen. Now let's look at some of the new foliage features. I'm not going to go over every new setting in detail since they're pretty self-explanatory. Plants now have their own season slash health parameters that you can adjust. These allow you to change the foliage colors to simulate the state of health or season of your plants. First, you need to enable this feature in each material instance of each type of plant you want to affect in your scene. Now in this scene, we only have one type of fern, but if we also had, say, a grass plant in our scene that we also wanted to include, we would have to do the same for that asset also. So let's start with these settings and see what it looks like. Now we'll jump over to the global foliage actor and adjust the overall season slash health level to really see the changes. Values between 0 to 10 seem to work the best. With this setting, you can vary the colors of your foliage with up to three additional colors to provide some variety in your scene. Just like with the previous setting, you first need to enable this feature in each material instance of each type of plant you want to affect in your scene. 
And we'll jump over to the Global Foliage Actor to adjust the overall level to see what it looks like. A range of 0 to 2 seems to work best. Now this effect is a bit more subtle. It allows you to add growth or aging color changes to your plants. You need to enable this feature in each material instance of each type of plant you want to affect in your scene. If we play with the growth effect height, this controls how far up the plant the effect will be seen. The 0 to 20 range seems to work the best. This one does not have any additional controls in the global foliage actor. There are some plants that have a different tinting on the back side of the leaf compared to the front side, and this feature lets you replicate that look. You need to enable this feature in each material instance of each type of plant you want to affect in your scene. This one also does not have any additional controls in the global foliage actor. With this update, Quixel included some new wind controls, one targeting low-end devices and the other suitable for mid to high-end devices. Let's look at the first one for low-end systems called Simplified Wind, which is enabled by default. This consists of two different animations that are applied to random parts of the plant to simulate a realistic wind behavior. The primary animation is enabled by default but you can also toggle these on and off in any combination of your choice to get the look you want. First, let's bump up the wind strength so we can get a better look at each of these animations. Here you can see the motion of the primary animation. It's a simple back and forth swaying movement. Let's disable that and take a look at the secondary animation. This one is a bit more random than the primary animation. And with them both on, you get a nice looking wind effect for low end systems. Over in the global foliage actor, only the wind speed and strength work with the simplified wind. The tiling and noise settings have no effect. The second wind control for mid to high end systems is called simple wind. And yes, the naming could have been better. Simple wind is based on noise patterns. So it's ideal for grass when you want to get that rolling wave of wind effect. To enable simple wind, just disable the use simplified wind setting. Like the simplified wind control, this too works with the primary and secondary animations, but with the addition of a tiling and noise pattern thrown on top to produce a more complex wind pattern. In the global foliage actor settings, the wind pattern can be changed via the wind tiling plants and wind noise plants controls. And finally, to disable wind per plant type, just enable the disable wind animation setting in each of the material instances of each plant type as needed. Here I've combined all the settings we just covered, and as you can see, you get much more realistic and natural looking foliage, as opposed to just sticking with the out of the box look straight from Fab. So that concludes this tutorial and how you can use the new Quixel Megascans foliage features to improve the look of your foliage in your scenes. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if so, please hit that like button and leave me a comment below letting me know what you think about these new features. 
and also let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when the next tutorial comes out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.